Here we're asked to explain the following observation. Methanol, whose formula is given right here, has a boiling point of 65 degrees centigrade, while methyl sulfide, whose formula is given here, has a, a boiling point of 6 degrees centigrade. In other words, methanol has a much higher boiling point than uh, methyl sulfide. What accounts for that difference? Well, hopefully you can see if you draw out the Lewis structures for these molecules that the only difference um, really is substituting an oxygen for a sulfur going from one to the other. And yet, that one subtle difference makes a tremendous difference in terms of uh, what temperature you have to heat this up to to get it to convert from a liquid to a gas. You should also realize that methanol's oxygen-hydrogen bond is a hydrogen bond because hydrogen bond is of course a hydrogen bonded to either an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, whereas this is only a dipole-dipole. So we call this a dipole-dipole force, whereas this is hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond, there's such a much greater uh, difference in electronegativity between these two atoms that there will be a very strong partial negative charge on the oxygen and a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. Very much uh, more dramatic in difference than the difference between the sulfur and the hydrogen. So m molecules of methanol that stick, when they stick or stack on top of each other, will stick much more intensely than molecules of, di of uh, methyl sulfide. So it will take much more heat. You'll have to pump a ton more heat into it to get those molecules to unstick from each other and then boil, that is convert from a liquid into a gas. The second question that I shows that krypton has an atomic mass of 84 and has a boiling point of 120.9 kelvins while argon, uh, no sorry, 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 while chlorine gas has a molecular weight that is a little bit less, 71, but boils at a much higher temperature. What accounts for that? Here's what accounts for it. Krypton, as you have a bunch of atoms of krypton floating around, you can imagine krypton, of course, having all of its electrons zooming around in its orbitals. The protons are in the nucleus. As that approaches another molecule of krypton, in order for them to start sticking to each other, there has to be a brief moment in which these electrons are all, or more or less, on one side, while these electrons are on the analogous side over here. So that for just a moment, there's a partial positive charge exposed on this side coming from the nucleus and the krypton. Over here there's a negative charge. They stick. And as soon as that happens then they'll start oscillating their electrons back and forth complementarily and that will continue to happen as other krypton stock, stack on top of each other. In the case of chlorine gas, Cl2, I have two atoms of chlorine in a single molecule. Therefore, and I'll go ahead and draw the full Lewis structure here, but these electrons really around these chlorines are oscillating around the entire molecule in its molecular orbital. And uh, so it's much easier because you have two atoms uh, to create a momentary dipole uh, and have it stack on top a of a second molecule of uh, Cl2. So really the answer to this question is because of the number of atoms. Another argument that's given is that um, chlorine has a higher Z effective than, than krypton which means that the electrons inside these orbitals will feel the attraction to the protons in the nuclei of the chlorines much more intensely and therefore be much more swayable or manipulable uh, as another chlorine molecule comes on. For this magical inquiry we are given two molecules and we are asked to determine what uh, intermolecular forces exist in them and then we are asked to determine which will have the higher boiling point. Propane looks like this. If you actually draw out its full Lewis structure, you'll see that I have a bunch of carbons with hydrogens all around them. Butane is similar, except it's just one carbon more in size. Drawing these hydrogens takes a long time. As I've stated elsewhere, both of these molecules have all carbons, all hydrogens, no significant difference in electronegativity, so you don't have a very strong partial positive or partial negative that's lasting anywhere. Therefore, the only intermolecular force these have are London forces, which are also called dispersion and van der Waals. Which of these will have the higher boiling point? I've also stated elsewhere that if you have two molecules that have the exact same kinds of intermolecular forces, that is both of these just have London or dispersion forces, then the larger the molecular weight, the higher the boiling point. In other words, between these two, butane is going to have a larger boiling point. Why? Well, it's just like having a piece of Velcro. If I've got a piece of Velcro that's this long, and I've got a piece of Velcro that's a little bit longer, 
it's going to take more energy to tear the piece of Velcro that's longer apart than it is to tear the, piece of, the two pieces of Velcro that are shorter uh, apart from each other. And the reason is not because the Velcro in one is somehow intrinsically stronger than the Velcro power in the other. It's just because of size and length. There's just more to stick when butane molecules stack on top of each other than there is when propane molecules stack on top of each other. Incidentally, at standard temperature and pressure, propane is a gas. You've probably seen that if you've ever looked or purchased or looked on the internet a propane tank. Whereas butane, which is found in butane lighter fluids, is a liquid. Although it's a very low boiling liquid. In this next problem, we're given two different molecules. Phosgene, whose uh, formula is Cl2CO. And phosgene is a terrible chemical warfare agent. And then formaldehyde, <coughs> which has this formula. Formaldehyde is uh, a, a preservative found uh, in cadaver labs. They don't use it, I think that they've replaced it with other preserving agents, but anyway, it has a unique smell. If you draw the Lewis structures for these, formaldehyde has a Lewis structure, or sorry, a phosgene has a Lewis structure that looks like this, whereas formaldehyde has a Lewis structure that's the same, except it has hydrogens in the place of the chlorine. So the first question is, uh, which of these, oh, sorry, what types of intermolecular uh, forces do these have? You'll notice that oxygen is much more electronegative than carbon, Therefore, you have a dipole there. A, a relative strong partial negative on the oxygen is strong partial positive on the carbon. Similarly, chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. So once again, you also have dipoles here. So I'm going to have a partial uh, negative on the chlorines. Over here, carbon and hydrogen are about the same, so there's not a strong dipole either way. Once again, between the carbon and the oxygen, however, I do have dipoles. So, all, both of these molecules and all molecules, no matter what they are, have London forces by default. They have London forces. In addition to having, having London forces, each of these molecules is going to have dipole-dipole intermolecular attractions. Which of these two molecules will have the higher boiling point? Well, let me ask you, which of these two molecules has a higher amount of dipole-dipole? And which of these two molecules has a higher molecular weight? Yeah, it's phosgene. So phosgene is going to have a higher boiling point than formaldehyde.